Disorders of sexual development have often been considered as a medical and a social emergency. But what's been often ignored that it is actually an emergency for the doctors who rush towards going to the books with the various things as to how to evaluate an individual with DSD. IDSD will focus on the entire aspects of the sorosexual sexual differentiation ranging from pathophysiology to classification to evaluation and management to IDSD which is going to focus about disorders of sexual de development which is a very intriguing topic a very interesting topic which is often causing a lot of confusion with regards to evaluation and management website learning.growsociety.in which from which we are webcasting this event where we have got multiple options available for learning in the form of our master pediatric endocrine course over 18 months covering nearly now 100 modules on everything related to pediatric endocrinology so if you want to learn you've got each and every aspect which is there using videos using text pre-test case scenarios and everything available we have recently launched a pediatric endocrinology for postgraduate program which again is covering a number of learning modules specifically for postgraduates for a three-year period all of you can have a look at a book which is available and along with that there we have the mobile application basically which is covering in that perspective the various aspects of management of pediatric endocrine disorders including the approach pathway the management pathway the personalized management care and there are various ways you can use it's a very intuitive form in terms of evaluating patients with different disorders of pediatric endocrinology and these are available on Android and iOS. This is a bit about the overview of this complicated field of sex chromosome DHT. Now we have formed the basis with regards to the physiology, with regards to the etiology, the classification. Now we discuss about the assessment and there are two important aspects in that regard. So when we have a disorder of sexual development, there are three major questions that you have to answer. Is it really DHT? What is the cause of DHT? And what's the diagnosis? So for that, you need to have a very, very meticulous approach because there are so many diagnostic considerations, so many variability. And that's why we have divided into two parts, clinical and investigation. And for that, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Neha Agarwal, who was a fellow in uh, pediatric endocrinology and who is currently working at the Himalayan Institute of Medical Sciences in Dehradun. And DST is not only a medical emergency, but also a social emergency. So in this regard, the main aim of clinical assessment is to exclude the presence of life-threatening conditions like 21 hydroxylase deficiency, and also at the same point, determine the etiology to decide upon the gender of rearing and subsequent management. So the first step in the clinical assessment of DST is to ascertain or confirm whether it is actually DST or a normal variant such as buried penis. After confirming the presence of DST, the second step in the evaluation is to broadly classify the DST into either of the three groups, that is XX, XY, or the sex chromosome DST, which have already been covered in detail. And the third step is to identify the cause of DST using proper meticulous investigation and worker. Coming back onto the fundamentals of social development, which happen under the influence of the genetics and determine the development of a unicellular cell, either into a testis or ovary, depending on the underlying genetics. The gonads further form the testosterone, that is the male hormone, or the estrogen, that is the female hormone, which act on the respective receptors, that is the androgen and the estrogen receptor, to help in the development of external and internal genitalia. Finally, determining the gender identity. Any discrepancy in the external appearance and the genetic sex is what is known as disorder of sexual development. So what actually comprises DSD? Presence of atypical genitalia, cryptorchidism, penoscrotal hypostadias, these are all few examples of DSD. So broadly speaking, in a phenotypic male, presence of bilateral cryptopidism, severe hypospadias, that is penoscrotal hypospadias, hypospadia with undescended testis, or hypospadias with microspenis constitute DSD. Similarly, in a phenotypic female, presence of inguinal or labial gonads, labial fusion determined by anogenital ratio that is above 0.5, 
tetromegaly, that is presence of a phallic length of more than 0.9 centimeter and presence of pubertal virilization or amenorrhea comprises DST. Now, there are certain normal variants which may look like DST but are actually not DST and do not require any further evaluation, such as prominent clitoris, which may be seen in premature neonates, and these uh, neonates do not actually require evaluation, labial adhesions, and penile hypospadias, which are normal variants and might be confused as DST. On further evaluation, it is important to determine the phallic size accurately, which is done using a rigid transparent ruler on the dorsal aspect of the phallus, extending from the pubic symphysis to tip of the phallus, excluding the foreskin. Any length less than 2.4 centimeter in a phenotypic female comprises micropenis, and more than 0.9 centimeter in female points towards clitromegaly. Apart from the phallic length, it is important to determine the mid shaft diameter and palpate for the erectile tissue. Moving further, it is important to determine the number of gonads and the location of gonads by feeling or by palpating using two hands, one placed on the superficial inguinal ring and the other on the scrotal sac. So any round, smooth mass palpable in the superficial inguinal ring is usually a testis. Sometimes or rarely there may be presence of prolapsed fallopian tube in the, super, in the inguinal canal. And rarely we may find heterogeneous mass, which is ovotestis. So moving further, it is important to determine the Mullerian structures. So during this presentation, we are mainly focusing on the clinical examination, which will help us broadly categorize the DSD patients into XX or XY DSD. Simulating structures can be identified using clinical examination or a per rectal examination using ultrasound or magnet or MRI imaging, and we may sometimes find a hemiuterus. The number and openings of urogenital opening and the extent of confluence that is proximal or distal is important in terms of surgical management from there onwards. And it is important to determine the extent of masculinization in a female using Prada staging, which extends from stage one to stage five, in which stage one denotes a typical female phenotype and stage five denotes a male phenotype. So using just the presence and absence of gonads and Mullerian structures, we can broadly classify our patient into either XX or XY DSD, wherein Presence of Mullerian structure in the absence of gonads denote XXDSD. Presence of gonads in the absence of Mullerian structure denote XYDSD, whereas presence of both the gonads and Mullerian structure is indicative of anti Mullerian hormone or overtestis. And absence of both the gonads and Mullerian structure is found in conditions such as anorchia or XYDSD sometimes. Karyotype is an important investigation which helps us confirm the genetic sex of the individual. Given the high chances of mosaicism found in these individuals, it is important to send a 50 metaphase plates at least. And there might be some conditions in which we need to determine the sex early. And since karyotype takes around a turnaround time of 21 days, a fish technique can be used to determine the Y material or the SRY gene. Then there are certain clinical pointers which may help us to identify the etiology, such as presence of pigmentation points towards congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Hypertension gives us a clue about 11 hydroxylase or 17 hydroxylase deficiency. And there is a list of steroidogenesis defect which are associated with salt wasting condition. Skeletal dysplasia may be seen in conditions with, associated with SOX9 mutation or POR deficiency. SLO syndrome is associated with polysyndactyly, and as sir has already highlighted, a presence of abdominal mass in XYDST should uh, exclude WT1 defect, and maternal virilization is seen in conditions such as aromatase, POR deficiency, luteoma, or ovarian tumor. So with this, I would like to again reinforce on the importance of determination of gonads, presence or absence of gonads and Mullerian structures to broadly classify into X, XDSD or XYDSD, and from there on, narrow down the possibility of the cause and investigate accordingly.